let us now learn about the internal features of the open medulla or the internal features of the medulla at the highest level. To study the internal features of the open medulla, we take the section at the level shown here. So this is the outline of the open medulla. Please practice drawing this diagram. We see the anterior median fissure or the ventral median fissure along the midline ventrally and on the dorsal aspect we see the median sulcus. Please do not confuse this with the dorsal median sulcus seen in the midline in the lower close part. As we, have, we are seeing in this ice cream cone uh, shown in the left side here, we are now in the upper open part, we are seeing the posterior surface of the ventricular cavity. So the median sulcus shown here is at a different plane than the posterior median sulcus of the lower close part. On either side of the ventral median fissure, we find ventrolateral sulcus along which the rootlets of the hypoglossal nerve will be exiting. More laterally, we have the dorsolateral sulcus along which the rootlets of 9th, 10th and 11th cranial nerves will be exiting from above downwards. Now between the ventral median fissure and the ventrolateral sulcus, we have the pyramids which are the compact fiber bundles containing corticospinal, corticonuclear as well as corticopontine fibers at this level. These pyramids are capped by displaced pontine nuclei known as arcuate nuclei within which these corticopontine fibers will be relaying. Between the ventrolateral and dorsolateral sulcus, we find another swelling known as olive. This will be overlying the inferior olivary nuclear complex which is made up of inferior olivary nucleus that is the largest of the nucleus there, a dorsal accessory olivary nucleus which is dorsal to the inferior olivary nucleus and medial accessory olivary nucleus which is medial to the inferior olivary nucleus. Now behind the pyramids on either side of the midline we have the medial lemniscus containing sacral fibers anteriorly and cervical fibers posteriorly. The dorsolateral angles of the medulla will be showing a collection of large fiber bundle at this level known as inferior cerebellar peduncle. These inferior cerebellar peduncles are also capped by another set of displaced pontine nuclei known as pontobulbar body. Now let us look into the cranial nerve nuclei which are present at this level. Uh, in our video on the functional columns, I had mentioned about seven functional columns present in the brainstem. They are arranged from medial to lateral side in the open medulla because of the expanded roof plate. So the seven functional columns are listed on the left side here. This is one place where we see the cranial nerve nuclei belonging to all the seven functional columns. So let us start one by one. Firstly, the somatic efferent column is represented by the hypoglossal nucleus which is found on the posterior surface on one on either side of the midline. They contribute to hypoglossal trigone in the floor of the fourth ventricle. The next is the special visceral efferent column represented by the nucleus ambiguous. Now this nucleus will have moved forward into the depth of the reticular formation. The third column is the general visceral efferent column represented by the dorsal nucleus of the vagus which is located lateral to the hypoglossal nucleus on the posterior surface. This nucleus contributes to vagal trigone in the floor of the fourth ventricle. The next nucleus is the nucleus of tractor solitarius which is located slightly ventrolateral to the nucleus, uh, dorsal nucleus of the vagus so it doesn't form any impression on the surface. Now this represents both general visceral afferent column and the special visceral afferent column. Then we have the general somatic afferent column represented by the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal. Here we are also showing the spinal tract of the trigeminal. As you remember, in the lower levels, the spinal nucleus and the tract are superficially located on the lateral aspect of the medulla oblongata. But at the upper open medulla level, because of the presence of inferior cerebellar peduncles, this nucleus is further displaced to the deeper planes. Then coming to the special somatic afferent column that is represented by the vestibular nucleus present on the lateral aspect of posterior surface. This represents 
the vestibular area in the floor of the fourth ventricle. In addition to the vestibular nucleus, we also have ventral and dorsal cochlear nuclei which also represent the special somatic afferent column. They are located on the posterior aspect of inferior cerebellar peduncle lateral to the vestibular nucleus. Among the two, the dorsal cochlear nucleus forms a very prominent elevation on the uh, inferior, olivar, uh, inferior cerebellar peduncle known as auditory tubercles. As you notice, the nucleus ambiguous will have moved forward to stay close to the sensory source that is the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal. Now this movement of the motor neurons to stay close to their sensory source is known as neurobiotaxis. In fact, this phenomenon is seen in all the nuclei which represent the special visceral efferent column. So here we are seeing it in relation to nucleus ambiguous. We will see the same phenomena in relation to facial nerve nucleus in the pons and also in case of trigeminal nucleus which is close to the trigeminal sensory nuclei there. Now coming to the white matter present in the open medulla, we see that the dorsal spinocerebellar tract will have already joined with the inferior cerebellar peduncle at this level. So also the cuneocerebellar tract which will have started from the accessory cuneate nucleus. The third spinocerebellar tract that is the rostral spinocerebellar tract will also have joined with the inferior cerebellar peduncle. However, the ventral spinocerebellar tract will still be along the lateral margin of the open medulla here. Now coming to the spinothalamic tracts, the anterior spinothalamic tract fibers will have joined with the medial lemniscus whereas the lateral spinothalamic tract will be known as spinal lemniscus from here upwards. The rest of the ascending and descending tracts of the spinal cord will all be present in the lateral tegment. Now, behind the medial lemniscus, we also find a pair of medial longitudinal fasciculus and a pair of tectospinal tracts located one on either side of the midline. Now coming to this large fiber bundle known as inferior cerebellar peduncle, otherwise known as restiform body. Now this has a group of fiber uh, tracts which will be connecting the medulla oblongata to the cerebellum. It is predominantly made up of afferent fibers to the cerebellum but it also has a few efferent fibers from the cerebellum. Now let us look at the various tracts which contribute to the formation of inferior cerebellar peduncle. Let us begin with the afferents. At this level already the posterior spinocerebellar, the cuneocerebellar and the rostral spinocerebellar tracts will have joined with the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Mind you, all these three are carrying non-conscious proprioceptive information from the body. The posterior spinocerebellar tract carries the information from the lower limb, whereas cuneocerebellar and rostral spinocerebellar tracts carry the information from the upper limbs. Next, we have the input from the vestibular apparatus, that is vestibulocerebellar tracts. They can be primary fibers or secondary fibers. Primary fibers are those which are starting from the vestibular nerve itself and they join with the inferior cerebellar peduncle to reach the cerebellum. Secondary are the vestibular nerve fibers will have relayed in the vestibular nucleus and then the second order neuron fibers will join with the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Both these group of fibers will form a surface elevation on the inferior cerebellar peduncle. So they are given a special name as juxta restiform body. Then we have a set of fibers coming from the contralateral inferior olivary nuclear complex. The fibers which are coming from the inferior olivary nucleus itself form the olivocerebellar tract. Those which are coming from the accessory nuclei form the par olivocerebellar tract. Now the olivocerebellar and the par olivocerebellar fibers are the only climbing fiber input to the cerebellum where they reach straight to the dendrites of the Purkinje cells in the cerebellar cortex. The all others will be synapsing with the granular cells in the cerebellar cortex. Next we have trigeminocerebellar tribal, uh, fibers, reticulocerebellar fibers and then we have in the open medulla a set of displaced pontine nuclei that is arcuate nuclei. From the arcuate nuclei, firstly 
these receive the corticopontine fibers because the cerebral cortex has a contralateral representation whereas the cerebellar cortex has the ipsilateral representation the fibers which start from the arcuate nuclei will cross over to reach the uh, ipsilateral side of the cerebellar cortex so they take one of the two paths one they start from the arcuate nucleus cross over to the opposite side run around the external surface of the medulla along the anterior aspect going on over the olives so these are known as circum olivary bundles or otherwise known as anterior external arcuate fibers or they may go straight into the depth of the medulla cross over to the opposite side on the posterior surface continue on the floor of the fourth ventricle as stria medullaris and reach the contralateral internal uh, inferior cerebellar peduncle so from the arcuate nuclei they either take the route of the anterior external arcuate fibers or take the route of the stria medullaris to reach the contralateral inferior cerebellar peduncle so these are all the afferent inputs to the cerebellum via the inferior cerebellar peduncle so we have the spino cerebellar set we have the vestibulo cerebellar set we have the trigemino cerebellar set we have the reticulo cerebellar set and we have the fibers coming from the contralateral inferior olivary nuclear complex and contralateral arcuate nuclei now coming to the efferents from the cerebellum they include cerebello vestibulo fibers cerebello olivary fibers and cerebello reticular fibers so inferior cerebellar peduncle has got predominantly afferent input to the cerebellum and comparatively fewer efferent fibers uh, which will be coming from the cerebellum to various nuclei located within the medulla oblongata thank you very much hope you enjoyed this video you can visit the site for the other videos of neuroanatomy thank you